So now that we've taken a look at the mini games, let's shift our focus to the other fundamental part of Mario Party, the boards. In Mario Party 2, gone were the character specific boards, but now all of the boards have their own unique theme. And to go along with that theme, your playable character would put on their own costume to go along with the board as well. So now instead of playing with characters like Mario and Luigi, you could play as Pirate Mario, or Wizard Luigi, or even... Archaeologist Donkey Kong? Okay, some of them were a little weird, but they were nice little touches and the only Mario Party game to focus on that detail. There was also a decrease in the number of boards as well, making a grand total of six boards in Mario Party 2. While this disc decrease was unfortunate, it wasn't necessarily a complete bummer because all of the boards, sans maybe one, were of very great quality. And with the implementation of item and dual minigames, all of the boards had their own unique events and happenings. Even though the main focus of this video will be on the boards, I'll still be sure to mention the item and dual minigames for each board, and try to involve them in on the equation for the board's ranking, since they were not eligible for yesterday's list. And also, this will only take into consideration the six main boards. No minigame stadium, no minigame coaster, and no freaking rules land! Anyway, on the list. Number six, Mystery Land. So this may have been an obvious position after my comments last week, but once again, the island hopping board gets the shaft for a very good reason, might I add, and will be at the bottom of my list this week. Mystery Land is quite easily the spiritual sequel to Wario's Battle Canyon. It takes place in a mountainous canyon, there are bob bombs, four main islands you travel across. It's like the developers actually thought that Wario's Battle Canyon was a fan-favorite board. Now, in preparation for this series, I did go back and play Mystery Land once before I did these rankings, and I may have been a bit too harsh on this board in the past. A lot of people criticize this board for the happening spaces and the prospect of getting stuck on each of the islands for an extended period of time. One of the main ways of getting from one island to the next is by use of the happening spaces, which essentially take you to the next island in the rotation. However, these are not the only ways to get off the island you are on. Two of the islands have a board event that you can use to transport yourself, and a third island has a skeleton key door along with an item shop where you can buy the key itself. This does give the board a bit more flexibility, but on the other hand, the fourth and even the random small chance fifth island still require you to get lucky with dice rolls. Not to mention that in order to use items in board events, you have to pay a small fee in the first place, which is kind of dumb if you're just not getting the rolls you need to succeed. So while I do feel like this board is better than what I used to think, it's still only a promotion from I hate this board to eh, this board is on is average on best case scenario, which means it just wasn't enough to escape from the bottom of this list. There's still just too much random chance that goes into this board and very little can stop someone if they are on a heavy roll to the star. You can use the slow curses that can be found on islands 1 and 4 to slow down your opposition, which is kind of cool, but I feel like a lot of this board comes down to what I like to call magic lamp farming. In other words, saving up enough coins, hoping you get lucky enough to get the item shop or item minigame, grabbing that magic lamp, and skipping all of the annoying legwork just to get a quick and easy star. Speaking of items, as for the item and dual minigames Mallet Go Around and Psychic Safari, they are definitely not the worst item and duel games of the bunch, but they can't exactly save the board either. The former comes down to some pretty tight but not impossible timing, and the latter is just really a button masher, so in conclusion, Mystery Land definitely isn't a bad board, but in a game that has so many better candidates, it just comes up very, very short. You know what's a mystery to me? Why in the hell does a deity own a cell phone? Who needs that crap? Number 5, Spaceland. Outer space has always been a very popular theme for kids and people in general, but Spaceland is a board that just made me want to have a bit more than I was actually offered. I guess in other words, the space theme is a little... underwhelming here. There are intergalactic hover cars and a giant laser, but that's really all there is in Spaceland. The board itself feels more like a space station, or in an in-the-future type of theme, than an actual space adventure, but I suppose that's getting a bit picky with the naming conventions. As for the actual board itself, it's actually a really solid and compact board that can offer some interesting moments. The happening spaces will probably lead to your biggest frustrations, as whenever you land on them, an annoying vehicle will chase you and other players in its path back several spaces to the last turn you made, 
but that's really the only problem the board has going for it. You can use the Intergalactic Police to set up traps for the rogue vehicles if you need to go back even further and try to grab a star that you had to skip at first, but make sure you or someone else are able to land in a happening space first. The most thrilling moments of this board will usually come from the Bowser coin laser though. In the middle of the board is a counter that will count down whenever another player passes the space. When the counter gets to zero, a giant laser will shoot diagonally down the board and any player in its path will lose a healthy abundance of coins. This gives a board an exciting sense of urgency as you are trying to escape the laser's path or trying to catch your biggest rival in the laser's blast. The item and dual minigames for the board are also really solid as well. Hammer Slammer tests your power and skill with a hammer as you try to grab an item of your choice on the prize totem. And Time Bomb is a fun test to see just how skillful and accurate you are with timing and seeing how close you can get to a bomb's actual explosion time. Overall, despite how plain and the board might seem, it at least doesn't feature the same problems that Mystery Land has. Number 4, Bowser Land. And after obtaining a solid 4th place in Mario Party 1, the Bowser board of this game also gets 4th place. Bowser Land, also known as the Grand Finale and the only unlockable board in Mario Party 2, is once again just what you'd expect from a Bowser board. It's red, fiery, and looking for a good place to burn you in every which way. Kinda. One of the key aspects of Bowser Land is the fact that Koopa Bank and item shops, two mechanics that have a presence on every single board, actually get changed. For one, the banks actually give you coins, opposed to taking coins from you every pass by, but if you happen to land on the actual space, you have to pay the full amount that was taken out. And while one of the item shops works in the same fashion as the ones on other boards, another item shop will actually force you into buying an item without any decision from you whatsoever. These little changes make Bowser Land kind of interesting. One of the biggest highlights of this board though is the Bowser Parade, where every few turns a parade of baby Bowser and enemy floats will start rampaging across the board down specific parade paths, which you can alter by paying coins and specific points on the board. If someone is in the path, I hope you have a lot of coins or somewhere near the end, because you will be forced to march and lose quite a number of coins in the process. While a lot of these boards features are cool, the item and duel games are, however, really not. The item game called Bowser Sloth is just a game of chance in order to pick up an item. And Rock Paper Mario, although a cool variation of Rock Paper Scissors, is really just a game of luck for you or your opponent's coins. However, these games are not the sole reason why this board only clocks in at number 4. Honestly, the entire top 4 in this game are incredibly solid and amazing boards to play on. At this point, it really just comes down to personal preference and what boards I enjoy playing on the most. There were three other boards I enjoyed playing on a bit more, but at the same time, I give Bowser Land credit where it's due, and this is one of the best Mario Party finale boards in the entire series. Number 3, Pirate Land. Again, I can't stress enough what I said in the Bowser Land section. The top four of this game were really hard to pick for me, and Pirate Land is definitely a fun board to play on. Whether you are trying to avoid cannonballs from rogue pirates while walking across the bridges, paying thwomps to get to the other parts of the island, or swimming on sharks, this board really does feel like a pirate adventure as you race your opponents to your golden treasure, in this case, the stars. One of the things that will cause people a lot of grief at first are the bridge happening spaces. You step on one happening space and you and every single player in that bridge area will get blasted back to the start of the level. While this is kind of annoying at first, this is another reason why they give you an item shop right before that first section. So if you want to buy a mushroom in order to increase your dice rolls or use a skeleton key on the door before the bridge, you definitely have that option. So much like the Bowser and Toad happenings in Mario's Rainbow Castle in Mario Party 1, it may be unfortunate, but it never really makes the game unplayable either. For me, the thing that annoys me the most about Pirate Land are the sharks. When you land on a designated space next to the docks, a shark will come out of the water, take five coins from you, and force you to ride to the next island. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you have the five coins, you're going. I really wish they gave you the option on whether or not to go to the next island because it's such an unwelcome moment when it actually happens, and incredibly random in terms that it was programmed this way, in nature. The only thing I'm thankful for though is the fact that it only happens on three spaces on the entire board, and sometimes it can be helpful, and also, better five coins in a much larger number. 
The item and dual minigames for this floor are incredibly solid as well. Roll Out the Barrels is an item game where you really have to pay attention if you want to win the prize you care about most. It isn't the most difficult follow the cut for your prize game, but it isn't exactly a freebie either. Saber Slashers is a very intense duel game where you need to be very fast and very precise as you're given an extremely small sequence of buttons, and if you want to win, you have to be faster than your opponent in inputting the button sequence. Overall, not a whole lot to say. Pirate Land is a solid board and definitely one of the best that Mario Party 2 has to offer. Number 2, Western Land. I've never really been much of a Wild Wild West kind of guy, but as far as a board in Mario Party is concerned, Western Land is one of those boards where if you don't want to play anything that's too complicated or chaotic, you can still have an incredibly competitive game here as well. Western Land is one of the bigger boards in Mario Party 2, but it's not necessarily big in a way that makes it take forever to get to the star space or any important board event or space you need to go to. It just has a lot of different paths and directions you can take to get where you're going. The board itself is a western community enclosed by a train track that serves as the borders for this board. And of course, when there are train tracks, there is definitely a train nearby, and this train will knock you all the way back to start if you manage to get in its way. As you might expect, the train moves forward based on the happening spaces, but you can also control the train directly if you make it to one of the train stations, and the train happens to be there. Not only can you use the train to knock over people and back to the beginning, but you can also use this as a way to move forward, or in some cases backward, depending on the roll you dice block, on this board as well. Now if you don't want to deal with the train, good news, you can avoid the train for an extremely long period of time if you decide to take the inside routes. You'll miss out on a few board events, but sometimes you can actually cut through quite a bit of the board and it's worth looking into if you need a star pronto. However, the second you are back on the track, don't be surprised if your opponents start looking for blood. There is also a board event where you can pay Wiggler 20 coins to host a Hootenanny for you and all of your opponents, bringing them all to the same space, or in better terms, taking them away for a potential star buy. Most importantly though, you're bringing a bunch of Mario characters together to get drunk on milk. Hooray hooray. Finally, as far as the board minigames are concerned, Give Me a Break is quite similar to Mystery Land's game, although a bit harder to time properly. Once you know the timing though, you should be able to grab the item you want every single time. The dual game, Quick Draw Quarks, is a Samurai Kirby type of game where the fastest draw, once Goomba says go, is the winner. Those types of games that rely solely on timing and anticipation always make me nervous, especially when a lot of coins are at stake, but I know there are a lot of people who really like those types of games as well. So on the whole, Western Land is another great example of a board that's not only a lot of fun to play on, but it can also be easily adaptable for any type of playstyle and situation. It was really hard choosing my number one for this list, and while Pirate Land and Western Land got very close, there was one contender that just barely got the edge for me. Number one, Horror Land. Once again, I'm not really big on the whole horror theme, but not because I'm a scaredy cat or get freaked out extremely spooky things. It's just never really been one of those things that has really given me a level of excitement like it does others. But I know a good board when I see one, and Horror Land is a board I have a lot of fun with no matter what and whenever I play it, which is surprising to me considering the sheer amount of things that can happen here. First off, the board is based on day or night cycle. Some events only happen during the day, and some events only happen during the night. The switching of these days is happening every few turns, unless you decide to land on a happening space and make the change immediately. But there is so much more that goes on. The Womps from DK's Jungle Adventure are back and perform the very same function as they did in Mario Party 1, with the added quirk that they are immovable walls during the night. Mr. Eye takes up residence on the lower right and upper left corners of the board, allowing players to immediately transport to the other side of the board with a small fee, and the cost varies from day or night. There are also a few board events that can force the change of day to night and night to day for a small price. And perhaps the scariest factor of them all, Boo is available. Not once, not twice, but five freaking times in this board. Some spaces only during the day, and others only during the night. But one of those Boo spaces is the legendary Big Boo, which if you pay triple the amount of coins for Boo's normal fares, you can steal coins and stars from every player on the map. So with so much chaos on the board, how could this possibly be my favorite? Well, the funny thing is, as chaotic as it is, it feels like it's a very controlled chaos. And I think it has to do with the fact that it's not only one of the bigger maps of the game, 
but it also has a lot of different paths that feature a variety of different events and routes you can take to get across the board. So even if you, for example, get shut out by an immovable womp that is blocking the path to the star, you may end up going down another route that will take you through two boost bases instead, where not only can you steal coins from another player that beat you, but to potentially steal a star from them as well. I guess you could say that the board itself just feels very balanced to me. There's always a backup plan you can use if your first plan doesn't go through, and that's why I don't think I've really ever had a bad experience playing on this board. And no matter how scary the big boo is, the player still has to spend 150 coins for a 3 star steal. And you would be pretty stupid letting someone get away with that, not to mention that it needs to be nighttime in order to make it work. And lastly, there are the minigames, Coffin Congestion and Mushroom Brew. Coffin Congestion is pretty much an item freebie. You watch the item you want, and whatever coffin it appeared in last is the coffin you want to strike. Kind of lame that it's a freebie, but at least it's not random like some of the others. And Mushroom Brew is honestly probably one of my most favorite duel games. It's a game much like Saber Slashers, but with the added bonus of being a much longer duel that allows you to focus more on what your controller inputs are. Don't be too slow though, because if you get the same score as your opponents, it does come down to who was a bit faster. So for being a chaotic board filled with all kinds of events and craziness, but still being enjoyable and not at all frustrating, I can't really see a number one board of Mario Party 2 belonging to anything else. My vote, and the vote of Olympus goes to Horrorland! Okay guys, that is going to do it for Mario Party 2. Thanks again for joining me this week. As for Mario Party 3, I'm not sure if they're going to be next weekend or the weekend after. Uh, truth be told, these videos kind of ran very, very close to the deadline, so... If uh, they're not up next weekend, just a reminder that I'll have my other projects up instead. And I kind of want to do something special for Mario Party 3 as well, so it might take a little bit longer in addition to that. So, uh, as usual, leave your comments in the comment section below. If you agreed with my list or if you want to share your own list with me, I'm glad to hear all of your opinions. And I'll see you guys next time. Later, folks.